Hello and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crestorio 2. As I was talking about yesterday, in the last stream we spent quite a lot of time playing with the Stargate, or I say we, it was, it was mostly Mike and Tristan doing that. And so in the meantime I was spent quite a lot of time trying to get the science up and running and, and sort of sorting out various bottlenecks and things that we had around there. Mark spent a bit of time trying to get his internet working properly and had, unfortunately had a limited success there, so um, he's not been up to all that much in the last stream. However, I got up to a reasonable amount, so there's going to be a bit for me to talk about today. And so, let's kick off by having a look at how the science is getting on. And things are rather different from last time we looked at it. We've, uh, we've actually managed to finish a research. I think it was one of the factory spaceship researches, so we've got bigger and bigger spaceships available to us now. And you may, if you, depending on how well you remember what was going on last time, you'll notice that we now have an actual healthy supply of the advanced science packs. And if we follow... That's deep space. <clears throat> we, have, we also have a healthy supply of the advanced science packs, these ones down here. And if we follow those back up and round and here, all the way around, you'll see that actually that's going really, really well. The, uh, the belts are completely full, so things are catch things have caught up, they're going as fast as we um, as we want them to. And that's because we now finally, we have a supply of the uh, of the advanced one packs coming up here along this belt, and those are being produced by these machines because we ha now have a healthy supply of the catalogues, because we have a healthy supply of all of these cards and the rainbow catalogues coming in from up here, but that's, that's fine. We know, we never had a problem with the rainbows. And that is working because now over here we are actually be able to make these things pro properly because we finally have enough quantum processors. And that has been the big push of mine during the last uh, stream. There was, I did a lot of work in, in trying to do, trying various things in order to boost the quantum processor production to get it up to a state where, well, where it was, where we, where we had enough of them over here. And there was quite a lot that went into that. So let's delve in and see what happened. The first problem I found was the Holmium cable production down here was being starved of plastic. And that was very weird because we have this shiny, shiny um, plastic product, well, everything petroleum based production system up here. And it's, it should be able to churn out massive quantities of plastic. So we shouldn't have any problems there at all. As you can see, we've got all these, these four machines making it with fantastic levels of speed module in them. If I tell this train to get lost for a moment, uh, let's just send it around back over to here or something, I don't know, just so it goes away. You'll see that when this train pulls in, you'll see just how quickly it fills up from having these machines chucking all of the plastic through. And so we sh I was very, very surprised to find out we had some issues with plastic. There's so much production available. You can see this is, this is filling up. It's not filling up slowly at, uh, at all. And we've so we've got large quantities of plastic being churned through here, so there shouldn't be any sort of problem. But it turned out we we're running out of coal, and that was because a train had got a bit confused on the way out of this station. So we have we have coal that comes from two different places, essentially. The high priority stuff is from this supply over here in the core processing area. So this is where all of the coal that comes out of core, mark, core processing and is brought back from other planets, all of that goes first into, this, uh, into these boxes up here, where it will then be uh, theoretically be used. And if there's any excess, that'll go over here to produce even more more plastic and this is another priority that should be picked up first but because that train had got stuck we'd ended up with a plastic train then getting stuck so trains hadn't been coming over here to pick up the plastic and they hadn't been going over to, and they hadn't been picking up coal from over here um, the other coal trains that I was alluding to will then go off to coal mines if there are any of those. So my first assumption was that oh, maybe one of the coal mines has run out and therefore it's not calling for a train anymore. But there's pl a plentiful supply of it up here and there's a train sitting here merrily. And there's another. all the trains for that seem to be moving. I'm still not 100% sure what was wrong with that train because when I checked it, it was, try it was trying to go to coal drop. So I think somehow it was trying to go to coal drop, but this didn't need, didn't need any coal at the time. I I honestly don't know. I, if, if you if you have, if you want to try and work it out, then uh, please feel free to go and have a look at the vod of the stream. But it was a mystery to me that that train was doing something very weird, and I I have sort of have to assume that somebody went along and poked it in some way that they shouldn't have done, and that threw the whole system off. And but I don't know. It's it's very weird. I, yeah, I have no idea why that failed, but something was something went very, very strange there. But anyway, I went in there, I gave the train a kick and told it to get lost, and since then, seems, things seem to have started working again. As you can see, we now have plenty of coal here, it's flowing and we're making plenty of plastic. This train can be put to, I don't know, we can go back to the plastic pickup now, I guess. Um, and it, it'll pull in over here. That's absolutely fine. So the trains are now working again properly, and we've got the plastic being brought down here, and so we've got the Holmium cables coming through. Last week, I also added in an additional train, but bringing the Holmium cables from the from the uh, handover area all the way over here, up into space to hand them over to the quantum processor production area. And I also put in an extra train to bring the Holmium cables over from the production area over here to the consumption area, or at least the handover area over here, because, well, there were, we need to transport a, lot, a huge quantity of them, and it's a long, long way across there. So I need, needed the second train in there. 
However, that then eventually meant that we had a shortage of Holmium cables over here because we're ripping through them so quickly in order to keep all of the uh, all to keep all of these trains satisfied. And so, in order to fix that, I've did done some upgrading over here. I did consider originally put, putting in another copy of the um, cable production facility over here, but actually it was much much easier just to come in and upgrade all the modules. So the speed beacon down here has had its has had modules changed from tier three to tier six, and all of the machines here that are actually making the things have been upgraded from prod three to prod six. And so this means not only is the whole system running faster, it's also using up less holmium and less plastic and less iron in order to make all of the stuff that it's trying to make. And that has been a massive improvement. In order to keep this happy, I also needed to upgrade the belts around here. So we've now got purple belts instead of blue belts taking the supply, taking the cables away. And you can see, see the uh, system filling up, that's good. And purple belt bringing in the plastic from around here as well. I also tapped off the, these two machines as well because they weren't being used. Those were originally only there to, to produce the cables that are needed to make the solenoids. But we're not using solenoids in particularly large quantities, especially compared to the cables. Now we're putting 32 into every single quantum processor. So I've put in these splitters here that will now pull off any excess because so they're priority, prioritized on the output to send them over to the uh, left here to go into the uh, solenoid production. So that's still the priority, but any spare ones will be passed around here. We'll, we'll go down these belts and can then all be loaded very, very quickly into the, uh, into the station over here. Well, these four belts loading up the station are not faster or not as fast as the eight belts unloading it, even though they're purple and green. Um, however, given that it takes the trains a bit of time to get around, this is more than fast enough, as you can see by the fact that they were filled up completely over here. So this is working very, very nicely. My only slight concern is that we might start to run out of Holmium because we are now using it incredibly quickly compared to how we were using it before. There's so much of it just sinking straight into here to make the cables in order to then go off and make the quantum processors. In order to make sure that the trains kept running smoothly, smoothly. I also put in this additional pause area for the Holmium cable trains. There is a risk that if both of them come down the space elevator at about the same time, or if there's a bit of a shortage of, uh, of uh, cables over here for pickup, then we could end up with both trains trying to get into this station at the same time. Or more likely, we'd end up with one train here, and because we've got a train limit of one set on this station, we get the other train would come out of the elevator and it would stop here and go, uh, oh. I, 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 don't, I, I don't know where to go. So it would just sit here, it would block all of the other trains and cause all kinds of havoc. And we don't want havoc, we don't want that to happen. And so, I've added in this little spur over here, which means that any trains that come down the elevator to get Holmium cable will first go in here, then they'll pull out and go into here to get the Holmium cables, and then they'll clear off and go up the elevator. And that means that if both of the trains end up down here at the same time, we can have one of them waiting in here, and one of them waiting in here, and there will be no problems with um, with, uh, with the trains jamming up. Oh, and here is, no, no, this one's here to get rare metals. Okay, that's completely different. And one down here to drop off stone as well. There's a busy area around here. And so, having made all those improvements, I then had enough Holmium cables in the in the boxes up here and things were working really really well So to further stress the system I put a second belt in taking them away and now as you can see it can't quite keep up However, I've pushed the um, I've repeatedly pushed where the bottleneck is back and back and back and I'm now pretty much happy with this Yes, maybe I could put in a third train to bring up the uh, quantum cables from the ground But that feels a bit unnecessary a bit over the top and I won't do that unless we start to actually have problems so you can see yes there is an underground belt here this is bringing the uh, the cables all the way down you can't see it very well because it's black on dark gray but you know uh, just take my word for it that it comes all the way down here like this you can see the flashes of yellow as we as we uh, go over each each underground belt as we go down and that then feeds in down here where we've got another belt creeping across the top here and that means I can then reload the Holmium cable belt a little bit further along and then have more machines running and so in order to take full advantage of that I've also put in some extra machines across here and I think I may have no I didn't upgrade the speed beacons I've, these, these are the same beacons but they're just um, going out a bit further because we've got more machines making them so that's working really nicely we're, we're now making this allowed us to make the quantum processors quite a bit faster. Of course, putting in more machines here means we're using then using up more of the resor other resources that are coming in, and so that meant we started to run out of Holmium, Holmium plates specifically. So over here, I put in some more speed modules into this machine to make that run a bit faster, and I've put a, a belt along the bottom here to, make, to attempt to bring out another stream of Holmium plates along here, because this one at the top couldn't keep up with all the machines that were um, that were uh, pulling pulling from it. So I've got another one of these coming along here and then feeding in along in the middle. So the first half are fed from the first belt, second half are fed from the second belt. That's working really nicely. Having made that update, we then start to run short of quantum phenomenon, phenomenon, phenomenon data, which is this one. These these cards are coming along here. And looking at this, well, it look I think that is gradually filling back up again because we had we'd run out partway through the last stream, and now we have now we have quite a lot backed up along the belt, and I'm pretty sure that's getting longer. And that was a nice easy upgrade. It was just a case of finding finding the belt uh, along here, tracing it all the way back up here, seeing where that where they come from. And here we go. This is where the quantum phenomenon, phenomenon data come from. And this is quite an easy upgrade. I was able to just show 
shove in some beacons along here. These speed beacons with tier 3 modules in means we've now gone from running these machines at their normal speed to running them at almost five and a half times their normal Oh no, actually they had, they had modules in them already. I don't know. They're, they're running a lot faster anyway, thanks to these beacons. I did originally try putting the beacons in in these gaps along here because due to the way Tristan's piped the uh, thermofluids along here, um, there were some nice big convenient gaps that were a good size for a beacon. Uh, unfortunately, it then turned out there's a row of beacons up here and so that meant these machines went into beacon overload and shut down. So um, I wasn't allowed to put them there, which is why they're a little bit further down on these little islands of, uh, of a space scaffolding, which looks slightly silly, but never mind, it totally works. And so this means we're now producing the quantum phenomenon data quite a bit faster. Everything is hunky-dory, except that we don't have enough memory cards coming through here because everything we're making... Well, we, we are clearly using a lot of um, a lot of memory cards in the in the energy production, in the energy science area. I wouldn't like to tell you exactly what for. It's probably for... It, it'll just be for everything. It'll be for the quantum phenomenon data. It'll be for these data cards it'll be in order to make some of the catalogues. Basically, we're just... We're just Really, we're just heavily using everything in this sort of area, so we need to. Um, maybe I need to do some belt upgrades to get the uh, those memory cards to come in a bit quicker. The uh, the belt does seem to be struggling quite a lot to keep up here. But getting back to the uh, quantum processors, the limiting factor for these uh, now is, I believe, is the uh, is the rate that the uh, Holmium cables are coming in at. And um, as I was saying earlier, I'm kind of okay with that. Yes, it'd be nice if our if our throughput could keep up with the uh, with the system down here, but I think we're actually we are chucking the cables in fast enough that and we and the, and the quantum processors are coming out fast enough. The things do seem to be fairly satisfied. We've got 2,600 in this uh, in this box over here now, and that's more than enough to fill the train up wherever it is because I believe that only picks up one or two thousand each time it stops off. Let's go and have a look at the train. Yes, it picks up one row in each wagon, so that's 500 in each wagon, a thousand in the, to in the, in the train in total. So the fact there's two and a half thousand in there means that this train is capable of filling itself up twice over before we start to run out. So this is looking really, really good. I'm slightly puzzled as to why it stopped here though. Oh, I see. It waits here until, until, well, five seconds of inactivity and either it's run out of quantum processors one of the signals coming in tells it it's time to clear off because the, the, uh, the, the station is empty. Or it waits for somewhere else to need quantum processors. And because at the moment everywhere else is happy, everywhere else has got enough quantum processors, the train is happy to just sit here and wait. That's um, interesting. Uh, I'm I'm, I'm okay with that. The train, the train can sit here. It looks like everything is working. The system is not broken. So having the train sit here rather than sitting somewhere else, yeah, it's absolutely fine. It's slightly odd, but it's absolutely fine. It'll work nicely. And so even once we had the quantum processor production up to a decent rate, it did take a while to fill up all of the buffers. So we have the buffer here where we're making the, the um, energy science packs. Then there was a buffer over here somewhere in the in the um, biological sciences up here. Yes, here we are, where we had to drop off enough quantum processors to, to fill up this station and satisfy this machine over here that's making the AI cores, I think they're called, whatever whatever they're called, a AI something or others. Then we had to fill up a buffer down here in the deep space science area because we're pulling in quantum processors here in order to make, oh yes, these things, the dynamic emitters, which we need in order to make the nanomaterials, which we need to make one of, one of the things for deep space science one anyway. So they're, they're needed in, in some some quantity over here as well and then after once all of those had filled up we're then able to bring them over to here in order to turn them into the uh, the quantum processing data or whatever the, whatever these things are called but we did eventually manage to get there we've now got all of our quantum processors through here I don't know why this insert is here that seems to be a complete utter nonsense but um, never mind it's not going to break the system but it, it, it'll work fine um, probably um, but yes, as you can see, we are making these data cards. They're coming down here. They're being fed in, in over here. And there isn't a train here waiting to try and pick them up. So things are looking pretty good, I would say. And that brings us all the way back over to the uh, science labs over here. Where, yes, as you can see, we have enough of the uh, the advanced data packs coming through, sorry, the advanced science packs coming through, and we've caught back up again on with the uh, the energy fours, which needed which needed the quantum processors as well. So yes, things are going very very well here. I think it's worth having a look at the quantum processor uh, production graph before we go on any further, because you can see some fairly spectacular increases here. It's gone from wibbling along at this sort of rate and then stopping quite a lot, and then wibble 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 stop kind of stopping then a boost up to about and then a boost up to about here this is presumably when everything was running absolutely flat out then we ran out of the holmium cables so there's a little bit of a drop and then a spike when some more brought in and now we're, we're producing them at this sort of rate here this is this is not bad this is this is, seems to be as, as you've seen by all the way all the buffers have filled up this is keeping up quite nicely with the with the with the requirements and the consumption and now we have a nice sort of steady consumption of this sort of rate we'll probably see some spikes in that as, as, as different things start to kick in and out but um, overall we seem to be in a very very good position now with these. I'm very happy about that. 
This means that now the limiting factor on the science is, once again, this is the biological force because we're doing a mining productivity research and that churns through enormous quantities of bio four and various other things as well. So you can see the 40,000 in there. That's, um, that's kind of greedy. Uh, let's follow this one back up and see see why why there's a problem there. Is that, I think, judging by the way that there's quite a lot on the belt, I suspect this is just that this is the speed that these machines run at. And yeah, that we don't seem to have any shortages here. We've got the uh, the core chunks coming in here. We've got the Vitalik epoxy and the Vitalik reagent flowing in nicely over here. We've got a good healthy supply of all the other science packs on the belt. Yeah, it's just that this is the rate we're making the tier threes at in order to make the tier fours. So that's your lot. We're this, this, this is as fast as we can make them. So maybe we should come along and put in some speed modules. Maybe we should just accept that this is the uh, this is the rate that we do we do um, biological sciences at. And so maybe we should switch over to doing something other than mining productivity for a little while to uh, to give it give it a little bit of a chance to catch up again. I don't know. I did notice that there was a red light on this machine over here, and there's a red light on this one. What? Do you, so there are some minor shortages. So you're short. Yeah, it's the tier three packs are not being made quite as quickly as we would like. And that's the oh oh and look. Spoke too soon. We've now run out of Vitalik reagent, as is uh, as is traditional. <laughs> oh dear. I thought we actually had enough of all of the uh, the biologicals now, but it, it looks like maybe we're, we're we're either struggling with them or we're struggling to have enough. Oh, the train has just set off, and it's got. Uh, no, it just has. It has a bio scrubbers and vita, vita, vita extract on it, so it doesn't have any of the uh, the reagent. So that makes me think that we've run out of reagent again over here. Oh, but a ship has just arrived. I think I, I think I saw that flickering into pl into place, and that does have quite a lot of reagent on it, and and, and some other stuff as well. So. <laughs> including three Vitalik epoxies in that one because we apparently didn't need a huge amount of it. Oh, and there's another eight in this one, so we've brought over eleven in this ship. Uh, great. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we are we 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 have at least some of lots of these. Yeah, you see here, by by the way, all of these boxes are filled up. We've got loads of the epoxy, even more of the um, core chunks, but that's because we had a massive supply of them available on this planet that we are uh, we, we want to sort of churn through at some point, but not just yet. We have at least some of the spice, a little bit of the extract, and a small amount of the acid. Um, this is <laughs> this is like a very very small graph, isn't it? Really, it's showing a little bit of it's like the graph down on the ground, but a bit a little, a little bit cruder and a little bit less um, less pretty. But it shows it does give us an idea of what we've got plenty of and what we've got shortages of. And as usual, it's the reagent and also apparently the. Oh, the bio scrubbers were a bit short of those as well. So I guess, well, we'll we'll we'll, we'll work churn those through as as we can. Eventually, this ship will finish unloading all the random trash it's got in it and start unloading things we actually want, and then we can pass them through here, and then we can get some more science done. But yeah, I think for the time being, it'll probably be quite a good idea to stop doing bioscience related things for a little while, and then maybe do something else like um, I don't know, energy weapon damage or worker robot speed or something like that. The problem is we don't really need very many of these, and we've got lots of them up to being practically infinite. Uh, artillery shell shooting speed is a not is a, is only a semi infinite at the moment, as is refined flammables and uh, stronger explosives. That's infinite, infinite, infinite. Rocket reusability 18 is phew, rocket reusability is a weird one. I mean, technically it's non infinite, but it's such silly numbers that I don't really know whether we want to do more of that. Infinite, infinite. We could do more follower robot counts. We could do artillery shell range, projectile damage, worker robot speed. Uh, energy weapon damage. Uh, I think we we'll, might stop doing the long range star mappings because we don't really need those anymore. But yeah, the, most of the, these are, they're all, as I say, they're all infinite or semi infinite. So yeah, I, I, I don't know what's the best way to, what's the best one to do next. Mining productivity is about the only one of these that's actually useful at this point though. So with the possible exception of factory spaceship, but that is now in, into the infinites. So uh, who knows? Uh, and now out comes some green stuff, so yeah, things are starting to go well down here. And so I think we're generally in a pretty good position over here. The resources are flowing quite nicely, the science is happening. Uh, we're a little, yes, we're a little bit short of uh, the Vitalik reagent, as is often the case, but it's, it's, it's going through, it's running quite nicely overall. I also had reason to go out to Andragon, and this is our stone planet where Mike also set up mines for absolutely everything else in the sort of the nearby vicinity. So you can see over here, yes, we've got we've got a, a core miner over here that's pulling up core, stone core chunks, and those are being passed over and being pulverized down, and everything they make is being shipped out by the train, as you've seen a million times before. But also, there's a Vitamelange uh, mine over here, and if we go flip over to the map mode, you can see there's a uranium patch up here, and and up here, and another stone patch here, and some rare metals, and some oil, and uh, some more stone, and and many many other mines just sort of scattered around. There's a coal one and an imosite one. Uh, oh, and a cryonite one as well that's nearly, nearly depleted. 
And so Mike's plan was to try and deplete absolutely every resource patch on this planet. Now, I don't think that's going to happen before we finish the game, uh, because, well, mostly because a lot of what we're shipping out isn't actually coming out of the mines, it's coming from the core mining. So over here, we have this system set up where it, where it, it, I'm not going to say it prioritizes, but a lot of the stuff that comes, but a lot of the stuff that comes out of here does seem to be getting shipped away first. Uh, we used to have a prioritization system set up over here that ensured that only stone would get passed through from this warehouse to this warehouse until the train was more than three quarters full of stone or something like that, and then it would pass other stuff through. And that meant that the other stuff wasn't really getting passed through in very large quantities. So we weren't really depleting all of these other mines, and that's a large part of why we've not got through so much stuff on this planet. If we actually just wanted to de deplete the mines, I guess the correct way to do it would be to would be to have uh, not put in the core mining and just be uh, plundering the stone patches and any other convenient patches that were nearby. However, we actually did want the stone, so uh, that's why it was set up like that. But anyway, over here, yes, you can see we, we are feeding through along here, and then I, I removed the prioritization systems and the filters on here. So now we are just trying to chuck as much anything as we can from here into this box and have it and have it flow through and into the train. Unfortunately, and I wanted to show you this actually in action, but but um, I, I can't really because uh, the train isn't coming back down because the spaceship the spaceship loading area is full. Uh, but unfortunately, we're not getting through the miscellaneous stuff that's in this warehouse very much because due to the way Factorio works, all of these load these two loaders on the output here are taking from the last. Um, block of the last stack in the warehouse which is stone and so if any stone is taken from there this gets down to maybe 40 30 20 then we end up with uh, more stone coming in on these belts any of these belts that can put some stone in which is this one is a solid belt of stone so this one can always put more stone in there uh, and then these ones have all got quite a lot of stone on so between them they can put a certain amount of stone in as well and so that means that that, la that last that last stack down here gets filled up about as quickly as it gets emptied out. And so that means that we're always taking stone out with these two. So we are basically always pulling it through and, and, and we're just not getting rid of anything else. Now, I messed around with this a little bit by doing things like changing the uh, the limit on the warehouse like that, and that meant that then suddenly this this one wouldn't get filled back up again because it's blocked. And so then they'd take out from the second one, but then that would get depleted and then suddenly filled up with stone fairly quickly. So it wasn't making its way back up through here. Maybe what we need is to have another is to have four of these loaders trying to push stuff through. Maybe that would then be enough to overwhelm the loaders that are coming in on this side. However, I'm not really convinced it would be because we've got so many different belts along here that are at least 50% stone that I think we'd still end up with quite mo most of what would be coming through here would be the stone. So it's a bit... It's a bit tricky, and also we then have so much random stuff being loaded in here that maybe we'd end up with just stone coming out along here. I, yeah, it's it's difficult. What we act oh what we actually want is to upgrade all of these to purple belts and and have four of them on the input here, and then we'd be pulling stuff out of this warehouse so much so much more quickly than we're loading it in that the other warehouses behind would deplete a little bit, and we'd end up pulling some of the, some stuff through from other other stacks, and then we'd be pulling through a bit more interesting stuff. However, there are no resources, there are no bots, there are no there's no nothing out here on Andragon. So it would require somebody to actually go out here and make those changes themselves in order to start pulling stuff through from here. Now that is sort of tempting because it would be nice to get a slightly more varied and interesting selection of things coming through from here and to do a bit more of plundering this planet. And I suppose technically as it is, when we start to deplete these stone patches, are you a stone patch or you're a copper patch? When we start to deplete these stone patches, then we will actually end up with uh, other things coming through because we won't see as much stone coming in along these belts. However, if we take a look at these patches, I mean, this is a stone primary, so these are big old patches of stone. There's one and a half million there, there's seven million there, uh, and there's another 11 million down there. These are big stone patches, so we're going to be pulling through enormous quantities from there. I suppose one other thing we could do if we want to just mess around with it and we're not too worried about exactly how much stone we have coming through would be to rotate all of these loaders along here, and that would mean we'd stop getting stuff through from the core mining. We would only now be pulling it through from the other mining. Oh, I hear a train. Yes, here, here, here comes a train. So you'll see, as this train pulls in here, it will start loading. If I put these back as they were before, it will start loading. It's mostly stone. You can see it's mostly stone coming through here. Oh, I put the block on the on this one down here. So, so yeah, it's pulling out. It's pulling out that uranium fairly effectively. But as soon as that stack empties, it just fills up with stone again because there's so much stone trying to be pushed in here, and then that never empties. That stack never empties, and so we just see a solid stone coming through here, which is much less interesting. If I flip these round, as I was talking about earlier again, at least then maybe we'll start to pull stuff out of here. Yeah, so there you go. We've got the the stone is now being pulled out fairly rapidly from here. 
and that means there's going to be more other stuff being fed through into the uh, in, into the train. So we're going to get rid of more of this uranium. So that makes going to make the the trains a little bit more varied. But we've still got this solid two belts of stone coming through here. And you can see this is the sort of thing I'm talking about. We've got one solid belt of stone flowing in along here, and then two half belts that are just stone going in up here. And so. Even though there's two belts flowing out, we, we've got so much stone coming in that nothing else ever gets a look in, which is a bit of a shame and a little bit dull. It'd be much more interesting if we had more more of the variety of weird things being pushed through. I could turn this one around as well. If, if I do that, then okay, we've got one belt of stone. Oh, there we go. Now, <laughs> now we've got at least a little bit of the immersite flowing in um, as, well, as well, because apparently there's, a, there's, there's room for a bit of that. So we've now got some immersite flowing through. That's a little bit more interesting. Um, but, oh, and now we can have, and if I turn this one off as well, then we can have a bit of uranium going in as well. And, yeah, there's all kinds of things now flowing a little bit more. But I've turned off so many of these different feeds that it's now much less effective. And so that's why I want these, these pass-throughs here to be much, much faster and pull, pull, pull stuff through into this warehouse in a much wider variety of... Um, of, of things without me having to come in art and artificially turn off the stone in all of, with all of these um, uh, loaders around here. However, as I say, that's going to require someone to come out here and do, uh, make some modifications uh, with some uh, with some upgraded belts. So it's not the easiest thing in the world to fix, but it would be quite nice to do if we can. Back over on Norvis, Tristan reported that a load of sulphur had been coming through in the disposal system down from uh, down from the space station, and we had a little bit of a little bit of concern about that, and had a look look into seeing where it had come from because we we're worried that perhaps the Agnea or the one of the Talos ships had been unloading the had been unloading sulphur into the disposal system, and it had been and, and something had gone a bit wrong there. But actually, it turned out that it was because we'd been making so much immersite and immersium that we'd had a, a, a huge excess of sulphur being produced, and to the to the extent that this warehouse here was completely full. And the warehouse up here was getting quite a lot of it in, and so we, and we, which is why we have the um, emergency dump systems up here, which will not, not, sorry, not here. We have emergency dump systems up uh, somewhere around here anyway that will take take the sulphur out and pass it up into the into the disposal system if there's too much of it in this warehouse, so we don't have a jam up on it. And the way that works is over here we have we're watching we're never handing out uh, immersion plate crystal or uh, dead train uh, train pack packs. However, we will unload sulphur if there's more than five thousand in this warehouse. And in theory, that shouldn't really happen because it should then go up here round these belts, go into here, and then go off down the, these systems to be taken away to Talos or Agnea or anywhere else that requires the sulphur. However, if absolutely enormous amounts of it come over from Taras, then we can we can eventually end up with too much of it, at which point we have the, uh, the other disposal system here as an emergency overflow. And so that means that the sulphur that was appearing down on the ground was, was through design, it wasn't actually a problem. Part of the reason that we'd seen so much sulphur arriving is because Mark had previously upgraded all of these um, the, these uh, storage systems along here. So there's now a lot more space available for storing the immersion plate and the immersite crystals. And so because we've got so much more space here, he set it up for us to be calling for quite a lot more from um, fr from Taras itself. And he's up the amounts we're asking for to 30,000 of the crystals and 45,000 of the plates. And so we're, we are working towards that. I, how, how much have we actually got? Yes, it looks like we now have enough of both of those, so they're probably not being fed in at the other end, but we do have quite a lot available in, in storage and just sitting around over here. So there's, there's a lot more has been pulled in, and this is a really good thing because we're getting through the Immer site at quite a rate. As you see, the train is still not here, so that suggests it is off busy. We haven't filled up all the buffers yet, potentially. Maybe we do need a second one in here, as I've been talking about before. And so having a nice healthy supply of it available is definitely going to be very, very useful. And as you can see, it is it's still flowing through quite nicely. In order to make sure this carried on working, Mark also put in more power over on Taras. Apparently there wasn't enough of it. Uh, I hadn't noticed that being a problem, but it is now being fixed. Looking back at something I was talking about a little bit earlier, Mark has also increased the amount of um, vitamin and extract that we're requesting over in, in Norbit, which is this one over here, because, well, we didn't have enough of it coming through, so that's been bumped up a little bit, and so now we should have a bit more of it coming through at any, any given time. I don't know if this is the same spaceship that's still unloading from earlier, but we don't seem to have got. We still don't seem to have any um, any of the Vitalic reagent up here. So um, maybe it is. Maybe we're still unloading all of the trash that came over in the previous ship. I, I, I don't know. Or maybe it's all just flowed through and we've we've burned through all that reagent very very quickly. It's it's kind of hard to tell. I think the reason I was looking at Andragon earlier was because Tristan has increased the rate that we're going to be getting through stone and iron ore at in order to turn it all into matter. So we've got the uh, we've got all our matter generators over here and down here. I think maybe these two are the new ones. You can see there's a, a feed of stone going into the bottom of this one. There would be a feed of iron ore going into the top of this one if there was any available, and that's creating even even more matter that can then go into the train to be taken off to go off to um, off to Fenestra for um, to, to generate electricity over there because we're getting through crazy crazy amounts of it. Um, but 
yeah, at the moment we have the, we have this stream of iron ore coming through here. There doesn't seem to be very much iron ore coming in from Oliran to be dropped off here, so that's a little bit of a concern. I'm, I wonder if we're short of that. No, looking over here, we seem to have plenty of it. Both these stations, uh, well, this station seems to be uh, completely full. This one's got some in it. So I'm not sure why the iron ore train hasn't come over. There's a train limit of zero on this station. Oh, that's being set when there's a huge amount of iron ore available. So there isn't currently enough iron ore available for us to want to pull it through from there. So even though the station down here is completely full, that's apparently still not quite enough for us to be uh, asking for more. So uh, this is yeah, this is hooked into this into the uh, into the cable system. So we've got twenty five thousand there, and then we have a load more in the in storage over here. We have another twenty. We have another fifty thousand here. So something seems wrong here. That's that I make everything. That appears to be everything is completely full. So this should certainly be asking for a bit more. I I, I think Tristan should probably take a look at that because I don't want to mess with it myself. But it doesn't seem to be working properly as as, um, as far as I can tell. Ah, he says that the way he has improved the, or increased the speed of matter production is by turn, upgrading all of these beacons to Wide Area Beacon 2s full of uh, Speed 6s from Wide Area Beacon 1s full of Speed 6s. So it's, it's, so it's essentially it's gone up from having in a power, power, mo seven and a half modules effectively effect, affecting the machines to having ten modules affecting the machines. So that's a 30% uh, a, a or 33% increase. So that's, you know, not to be sneezed at. It's definitely going to make things run a little bit quicker and is getting us a bit more matter being produced. So yes, good. Uh, whether it's actually enough remains to be seen. Over the last 10 hours, well, we've made 2.7 and used 5.3. That's not great. But over the last hour, maybe there's been some more upgrades done. We've made 400,000 and used 358,000. So I'll be having used it once, basically. Uh, and otherwise, we've just been sort of t ticking over. But we've been generating matter all of that time. So, yeah, I guess maybe maybe things are okay we'll have to see how things go in the next stream but there's also there is a decent amount of buffered if i zoom all the way out we can see that we've made 8 million and we've used 7.3 million so there's a 700,000 buffer remaining that's a smaller buffer than there was last week but there's still a bit of a buffer so maybe things will be okay oh and tristan says he also added in an additional spaceship that's doing the run out to oliran to pick up the uh, the iron iron ore so the one that goes from norbit out to oliran wherever that is down here in order to pick up huge quantities of uh, iron ore and bring it back over to be turned into well everything and there's, there's one of them there as promised last week I've put in the second inserter over here so this was for um, the the balancing problem between the two warehouses so I've got one of them I've now got one inserter that will pass through from this side to this side any time that uh, C is less than memory or memory cards is, is greater than C so that's when there's more memory cards in here than there are memory cards in here which has been turned into a C by this uh, by this combinator here the other one works fairly similarly, but that says when D is greater than, and we've got over up here, I've got D is, is C minus 100. So that's saying that when there is more than 100 more memory cards in here than there are in here, pass across. And so it's important to have a little bit of offset between the two numbers in order to make sure they, uh, you don't have, you're not just passing them back and forth forever. Um, but now this works quite nicely. We've got, you've got about 4,000 in each one. The trains come to pick some up. And when that, when that's stolen, a load of them, we'll, we'll see how close it gets, I guess. Yeah, it's showing 2k on each side, each side, 2.1k on each side. So it looks like they're, they're pretty well balanced. I was hoping it would get a little bit lower and I'd be able to see the actual, the numbers a little bit more precisely, but never mind. And, uh, and it's now filling up nicely. And because we're doing quite a lot of science at the moment, there's a nice healthy stream of reused, recycled memory cards pouring down here that can go, go into the system as well. We are still making lots and lots of new ones, but we're also recycling them at quite a rate as well. And if we look up here at the top, then I'm sure there's going to be quite a lot of scrap pouring in. But it's all coming through, and it's yeah, it's flowing through quite nicely. But there are gaps on all the belts, so we're clearly not overloading the uh, the processing system here. We're just able to deal with everything as it comes through. So that's working really, really well. That's good to see. I also, with a bit of help from Tristan, hooked up some of the extra uh, science pack things that we've been we, we've been struggling with up to the uh, the graphometron down on the ground. So you can see here, I've got uh, a section of uh, the belt being monitored to see how much is on there, and then we're passing that onto the cable here, which is transmitting, which is sending it over to, down to the ground to be put onto the graph. Now, uh, before, previous other other science pack, we've been monitoring the number of catalogs available in, in in the storage where they're being made, and that gives us a slightly more useful number. Whereas here, we're just checking this little bit of belt. So this is pretty much going to be an either yes or no. Actually, no, no, it's a tri-state. We either have it saying, no, there are none of these science packs available. We have it saying, yes, the belt is full, as it is at the moment. Or we can, or if we're lucky, we might see it sort of when, when, the, when the science packs are coming through, flowing through, and they'll say, well, okay, we've got a few in there. So it, it's slightly better than being completely binary, but it's still not quite, it's still not giving us quite the same levels that we're getting from elsewhere. Uh, I am also doing the same sort of thing up here somewhere with, with the deep space sciences. As you can see, they're being fed out into the system from these belts here and here. 
And that means that down on the graph, we're now seeing things like we've got all four of the deep space catalogues on the graph now showing up nicely. And I think we've got, yes, here we go. Here are the advanced answers. They're showing up as well. Now, as I said, it's not, we don't have, we don't have a buffer of these, but at least, at least gives us a yes or no as to whether the system is working. And as I alluded to earlier, we seem to have some problems with the uh, Holmium at the moment. Is that, oh, that's the advanced, no, that's the matter, oh, we seem to have a problem with matter science too. Maybe that's one that hasn't been put onto the graph yet as well. I'm not sure. Um, no, that's only been a problem for about 10 minutes, so that is uh, another thing that I'm going to need to look at in the next stream. We've run out of Holmium because we've made so many cables, but hopefully, now we're starting to fill up the buffer quite nicely, the demand will drop off a bit and maybe we'll be able to refill the, um, the Holmium buffer as well, that'd be quite nice. And as we've seen before, we are very, very short of uh, vitamin Lange extract, although the reagent seems to have come through now, so we've got a decent supply of that available. Looking elsewhere, uh, enriched vulcanite, a little bit low, maybe that's worth looking into. Plastic, eh, there's a little bit too much of that, but never mind. Stone's doing okay. Blue belts are now the one we've got the fewest of, that's interesting. I guess they've been, we've now got a good supply of immersium, so all the um, all the blue belts have been upgraded into green belts, so we've got, got, uh, got rid of We've lost a load of those as well. Um, and everything else looks fine because we don't care about plates because they're now being made on demand. So yeah, this is looking pretty good down here. It's, it's nice to see so many green bars on here. And even when there are where there aren't green bars, the red bars up here are quite short. I mean, the worst one seems to be the Holmium, but even that's only been about 25 minutes of, of, of difficulty. So I'd say things are doing quite well along here. And um, yeah, this is generally looking very, very good. As far as the science goes, well, we're working on mining productivity 14, as I was talking about earlier, and I believe we finished um, factory spaceship number four down here, which is quite nice. That gives us a bigger and bigger and bigger spaceships. I don't think we've done any more, but Tristan hasn't updated the notes here, so I, um, I, I'm not absolutely certain, but I'm pretty sure that's all we've got up to. So, I think that's the end of the episode. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you'll come back and join us for the stream on Monday, where we will hopefully be trying to get the um, the, the Stargate finished off and um, get get all of the and get and get us get it to take us where we want to go. And uh, well, I'll be coming through and trying to fix up some of these things as well. Maybe we'll look at a at a, at a victory ship, and we'll uh, and we'll generally we'll see see if we can get the game actually finished. That will be the last stream for uh, for a little while, um, so I hope we do finish in that because I'm going to be away the week after, uh, going away on holiday, so there won't be any uh, it won't be any streams the week after, but I will be around next week, including on Wednesday when I should be playing some more Satisfactory, and again continuing with all of the end game stuff that's been going on for quite a while now. <laughs> the end game is quite a long and co and uh, convoluted end game. There will then be the usual videos at the weekend. Hopefully, I shall try and get those out as quickly as possible, and I'll get, and uh, and then as I say, then there'll be a bit of a hiatus the week after, but then I shall be back as normal the week after that. With, uh, with maybe with some new fresh stuff. That depends on how we get on with the uh, with the final um, stream on uh, on Monday. So thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.